The problem with something like your car versus something like a piece of real estate is that you know this car is going to lose value, especially if you're buying this car new. So as soon as you go to the lot and you put your keys in the ignition, that car is immediately going to lose value from $50,000. It's going to drop down to around $45,000. The minute you put the keys in the ignition and you sign the paperwork, you bought the car and you immediately lose $5,000 with the value. And then after one year, this car is going to be worth around $40,000, about $10,000 dollars less than what you bought it for and remember you're financing forty two thousand dollars after two years this car is going to be worth around thirty five thousand dollars after three years this car is going to be worth around thirty thousand dollars after four years this car is going to be worth around twenty six thousand dollars and after five years when you finally pay this car off it's going to be worth around twenty three thousand dollars now remember you financed $42,000 to get this car, which means, well, how much did you actually pay in interest? Let me wipe this off and show you. If you were to go out and finance this other $42,000 at a 5% interest rate after your car taxes, fees, and interest, it's gonna cost you $63,000 over the course of five years to pay off this car, which is now worth $23,000. And if you get a 10% interest rate, well, now it's gonna cost you just around $70,000 to pay off a car that's now worth $23,000. And now the problem is, if you remember number three, this car has a limited lifespan. You worked for the last five years to pay $63,000 to $70,000 in interest on this car. You finally paid it off, but now you don't have an appreciating asset. You have a car that needs more maintenance, that needs more upgrades, that needs more care, and maybe it's time for you to start thinking about upgrading this car. So now what happens to a lot of people is you finally pay off the car, you finally have no car payments, and then you do what everybody else does. You go to trade it in to get a new car, and now you start this process all over again. So you now start playing this payments game of always paying money to the car dealership. BMW, Mercedes, Lexus, all these companies keep getting rich because you keep paying the money for the car, but then you're also paying money for the interest to finance the car that you didn't buy. This is why for me, I treat my car like a liability. I treat it like a shirt. If I wanna go out and buy a nice shirt, fine. I just wanna make sure that I can afford it first with cash. That means actually being able to afford the car with cash so I don't have to worry about the payments because those payments are now going into a car that's losing value, you have to pay interest on it, and it has a limited lifespan. Now, you're probably saying, but Jasprit, I told you in the beginning of the video, I don't have $50,000 to go out and buy this car. Well, what you have to remember is, you don't have to go out and drive a brand new $50,000 car if you don't have the money for it. See, this is something that's been created, especially because of Instagram, that everybody feels like they have to have a BMW, they have to have a luxury car, they have to have this really nice car, when the reality is, if you don't have the money for it, you shouldn't be driving those cars. You can go out and buy a used car that's a couple years old, get a much better deal on the car, and still have a good working condition car. And if you don't have the money for that, well then go out and buy a cheaper car. If you enjoyed this clip and you wanna continue your financial education journey, I have another video that I think you'll love. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. And for those of you who wanna stay up to date on the top finance and business news, you can join Market Briefs, my free financial newsletter, by clicking that button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.